what is the best way to remove an object from a photo? So all the time I have been doing background removal where I get rid of the background, but sometimes there's like a, you know, you accidentally leave a mug on a table or there's a pen or a weird piece of paper or the cat jumped in the photo. So you just need to remove that one object, but you don't want it to be like weird where there's like this big transparent nothingness void in its place. You want it to look like it was never there and it's still a pretty picture or background setting or whatever is going on in your photo. So let's talk today about the best tool to remove an object from a photo and still make it look like it's normal. So there are four tools we're gonna test out. We're gonna test out Adobe Photoshop, which is $10 per month or part of Creative Cloud. Uh, Adobe Firefly, which is $5 per month, or again, part of Adobe Creative Cloud. And Adobe Express, which is $10 per month, or again, part of Adobe Creative Cloud. And of course, Canva Pro, which is $15 per month, or I think it's 120 if you pay for the year. So. Let's test them all out and see which one does it best. All right, we are going to start with Canva because I think that is what most people are using. And honestly, it is the easiest one. And this photo and all the ones you see on the left were created by myself using AI. So if you'd like to learn how to create your own AI selfies, make sure to sign up for my free class, AI Selfies 101. But let's get into how to use Canva. So all you have to do is upload your image. Once you're inside of your image, when you click on a photo, if you go up here to the top left, this floating toolbar should automatically appear. Um, you're just going to say edit. And then over here on the left, you're going to see Magic Studio. Now you do have to have Canva Pro. You won't see this option with the free. Honestly, if you have Canva, the free option of Canva, it really can't do a lot uh, other than the basics. But you're going to go over in here and you're going to go to Magic Grab. So we're going to go to Magic Grab. And then here, I really like this. You get an option to either use a brush so I could take a brush and I could kind of just brush over myself, like if I want to remove myself from here. Um, and, you know, guess it takes a little while and there's a little bit of a lag, which I know what you're thinking. Well, maybe it's her internet. I actually have a Google Fiber, so I have one gigabyte up and down. So I'm not sure why, but it just, I think it's the application. That's why it lags. If you go over here to click, this is much better. It does a great job of just guessing what the object is once I click on myself. And then you can go ahead and say grab once it's kind of guessed what that object is. Now the only downside of this is if it guesses incorrectly, you'll have to keep selecting things or start using the brush and the guess click selection uh, till you get it. So once you've grabbed it, the nice thing is you can actually move it around and put it here, put it there. I mean, obviously that looks weird. Or I could just hit the delete button which is what I wanted to do anyway, and now we got rid of it. So there's a little bit of a shadow, if you can see that right here uh, where I was. So eh, is it perfect? No, but it looks good enough. Now inside, the next one is probably Adobe Express is something you might have. So Adobe Express, uh, again, to use these tools, I believe you need to buy the premium, which is $100 per year. So over here in my image, if I go ahead and I just say remove object, uh, it's going to let me brush. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have the option to just guess like with a click. So I will have to use a brush. Let's use a pretty big brush over here. And we're just going to go ahead and brush out some areas. And I got a little too much, but I think it'll do a good job of guessing. Scroll down. And back here, I miss them here. So as you can see, the brush does take longer. It's not as intuitive to use as the click in Canva. That I miss some of the shoulder. I miss some of this arm. And take this drink. And last of the dress down here. And I can probably make this brush a little smaller to go back in and finish the rest of this glass. Uh, I think I got everything. So we are going to go ahead. Oh, no, there's a little tiny bit of hair. There we go. And we're going to say remove. And I've disappeared from the image. So it's going to give me three options. 
over here. Um, and they honestly all kind of look the same. You can kind of see a little bit of an outline. Oh, disappeared in each one. So this third one is probably the best one. So we're just gonna go ahead and say keep. So I would give this one probably a eight out of 10. Uh, let's head over to Firefly. And over here in Firefly, you're just gonna go to generative fill. We're going to upload that image over here. And same thing, we're gonna go to remove and we're gonna have to use the brush tool and do the same thing. And I know what you're thinking, it's Adobe again, but I think they all work a little bit differently in each of these tools. And we're just gonna say remove. All right, same thing as before, it gave us three options. Uh, here's option one, here's option two. So you can see it filled in the pastries. There it didn't, here it did. And this one just looks a little off. So we're gonna go with probably the second one, it would say is the best one. The chair looks best in this first one. Uh, the background looks better in the second one. This one created this weird green artifact. Um, I don't know why that's there. So we could select it and then try to delete that again. Uh, but you know what, I'm just gonna leave it with this image. I'm gonna say keep. So Photoshop, if you did not know, has had this ability to magically delete objects for, I wanna say ever. It's been like, I think ever since it was there. Uh, they just never called it generative AI before. So in here, if you go to your toolbar, there's an object selection tool. As you see, object selection, quick selection, magic wand, they're all kind of grouped together here on the toolbar. We're gonna to do object selection. And over here, this object finder, you wanna make sure it's checked on. I don't know if it makes a difference if it's off, but I've always just left it checked on. And then for mode, I'm going to say lasso. But as you can see, when I hover over this picture, it kind of guesses what object I wanna select. So I wanna select me. I'm gonna select this right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say generative fill. I don't have to fill anything in. I'm just gonna let it guess what it should do in the background like it did with the other tools. And it's done. This I would say is probably a 10 out of 10. This one doesn't have any weird artifacts. Um, let's look at the second option. The second option does have a little bit of weird ghost uh, image and so does the third. So let's go with the first one. And that's the one that we're gonna go with. So, and I would give a 10 out of 10 over here to Photoshop. So you can see if I hover, I can see where I was. And in fact, over here, it created a layer mask. So if I just turn that off, I can see myself again, or I can not see myself. So I would say this is the best. There's no artifacts uh, whatsoever of a ghost image. If we head over to Adobe Firefly, I would say this is like a nine out of 10. There's slightly, like a tiny bit of a ghost image. It just looks not as sharp and crisp where it filled in the images behind where that object was, which was me. And then I would say for Adobe Express, you can see a definite artifact over here. And same thing for Canva, you can see an artifact ghost image. So these are both, I would say like a eight out of 10 for being able to do object selection removal. All right, so Photoshop is number one for object selection removal tools. And in the AI Glow Up course, we will be talking about the best tools, not the easiest, because I know that Canva was easier, but we're gonna talk about the best tools to use for your AI selfies, which do include usually a background that you may or may not want inside of there. So we will be talking about how to take some of those AI images, because let's be real, sometimes when you get those AI images, they're a little weird, they have some strange things, but sometimes you're like, oh, but I really love my hair in this picture or my expression or my photo or my clothes or something else. So we're gonna just mix and match uh, some of those AI photos to make the best image that you can to improve your online web presence or to just make yourself sort of dazzle in your next social media post. All right, I hope everyone's having a fabulous day and I will see you later. Bye.